Hello everyone and welcome to this new YouTube video with me Hayden Davidson. If you're new here then make sure you like and subscribe all the usual YouTuber sort of stuff and if you're coming here for a second time or a third time or a fourth time then thanks so much I really really appreciate you tuning in. Now in this video I want to talk about my almost one year selling on Amazon FBA using the online arbitrage model. Now it was, I think it was mid-December, I have to double check that I've registered my limited company to sell on Amazon. So I've almost been doing it a year. Um, and obviously I've learned a hell of a lot in that time, like loads. So I thought it would be really interesting to just sort of divulge a little bit about what I've learned in my Amazon FBA journey so far. So without further ado, let's dive in. So get yourself a cup of coffee, get yourself a tea, popcorn, biscuits, milkshakes, drinks, whatever you want, and let's dive into this video because it could be a reasonably long one. But I really think if you're just thinking about starting out or if you've just started out, this could be a really, really amazing video. And I wish that I knew this stuff before I started out. So make sure you just commit this time to listening to this video because it may save you a lot of big mistakes. So let's dive in without further ado. Now, when I first started selling on Amazon, I think it's important to, 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 to put you in the perspective, right? I had a couple of grand, I had a couple of grand to invest, and I was currently working on another business at the time I did this, right? So I think it's important to think that if you are looking at starting out, if you're looking at starting out, but you haven't got even a couple of grand, I would suggest trying to find more money before you do it. That's just my honest opinion. I ended up putting in 3,000 and then I ended up putting in a lot more than 3,000. Um, and I'm at the stage now where it's probably if I stopped reinvesting everything in stock, which is another, uh, another point I'm gonna mention later, I could be taking like a full-time salary from it and investing in the business. But I've put in probably around about 15 to 20,000 pounds. So that puts you in perspective. I'm not trying to put anyone off. It's definitely possible for less than 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 start, but it's going to be a little bit of a a little bit of a a little bit of an uphill journey for most of the way, just because most people don't have the persistence and the motivation to stick with it for long enough on such a low return, because it's not an easy business. And that's the next point I wanna put in, okay? When I started this business, I thought that it was going to be a lot easier than it was. Now I've stuck it out, so obviously it can't have been hell, because I wouldn't have stuck it out, right? I thought it was gonna be a lot easier than it was. This business is a real business. If you think you can start this up, just like selling a few bits on eBay, if you think that you can start this up and not take it seriously, but earn loads of money and go sit on a beach and drink cocktails, I'm sorry to be the one to break this to you, but it's just not gonna happen. Unfortunately, it's not gonna happen at the start. Unless you put in a large lump of money, pay for some serious mentors, like serious mentors, and and then and then get a team from the off and essentially pay someone to do all that and invest fifty to a hundred thousand. Even that, you still need to learn a lot more yourself. So, the image in your head that you're thinking it's going to be really really easy. You're thinking you're you, perhaps you've clicked on someone's course that has then led you to YouTube and then led you to me. Um, I'm going to be the one that tells you honestly, it's not an easy business. This is not an easy business. Think of this as a proper business, a long-term business with true potential, which it has, true massive potential, the biggest selling platform in the world today. Think of this as a proper business, just like you would go and set up a landscaping business or an accountancy firm or any other company. You've got to think of this as a proper company. Treat it like a company. Treat it like a business and it will pay you like one. Treat it like a hobby and you will get them kind of results, okay? I can't remember the rest of that saying, but that will do. You get my point. Treat it like a business. Um, another, um, uh, uh, something else that I've learned is that 
the strategy that you start with, the way that you look at this business when you're starting out may not be the way you look at it once, you, once you're once you six months in or 12 months in. So let me explain. When you start out, you're probably going to use a deal sheet or you're probably going to manually source deals yourself, probably spend hours and hours and hours trying to source manual deals yourself or get a deal sheet. And you're going to be under the assumption um, and it could be the correct assumption that all listings, all listings that you click on, all deals, that all potential deals are really saturated and that the whole game is saturated and some people actually give up at that point. Others will stick on for a couple of months and then think that it's saturated and move on. Others will stick at it for about six months and then give up and then be quite bitter about it once they've given up because they've invested six months of their time. Um, and then some people will see it through. And the amazing thing that happened to me personally after the six, seven or eight month mark, so quite a while in, I came across a mentor, some, some, some good people that helped me out. And when I say mentors, that could just be free mentors from Facebook groups. But one of them was actually paid. A couple of them have, have been paid. You don't need them. And as I say, there's a lot of knowledge in Facebook groups and YouTube, etc. But it felt like overnight, all of a sudden, after the sixth to seventh month mark, everything became clear. The potential became clear. And let me explain. You've got online arbitrage, which is just deal sheets, manual sourcing, VAs and stuff, just loads of deals, whatever deals you want. But it goes much deeper than that. It goes so much deeper than that. And this is what you won't get in your normal OA course when you're starting out. This is why people think it's saturated, right? Because OA is slightly saturated, G general vanilla OA, okay? But you've got to be smart. And this is what you learn when you stick it out six, seven months in, working loads of hours in it to actually understand, like, you know, the, the skeleton of OA, right? You start to see the potential within OA. And you start to layer back loads of different strategies within OA that then puts you into a different category, into more of a supreme category of seller, right? So whilst everyone else is giving up and getting fed up of penny pinchers, which there is, by the way, on loads of different deals, right? What you do if you stick it out, if you stick some time in the game, doesn't have to be loads, I haven't even been selling a year yet, just coming up to a year, then if you really search for these, then you can find the different strategies. And the sorts of strategies that you will find is, <clears throat> for example, just, 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 just to name a few, so you may read a keeper graph and you may become an expert at a keeper graph and you may decide that you're gonna buy a product and that product you're gonna sit on for the next two or three months. And you're gonna read, you're gonna buy products specifically, a big line of your business will be buying products that are only products that are going up and down and up and down and up and down. When the sale comes on, the sale goes off. The sale comes on, the sale goes off. The sellers come on, the sellers drop off. The sellers come on, the sellers drop off. You end up looking at it, this is one strategy, you end up looking at the business a bit more of a sort of trading business where you're just looking at like stocks and shares you're just looking at the graph and then you're placing you're hedging your bets on it okay and that's what one of my strategies is uh, it's just deal sheets and on that deal sheet though whilst everyone else is getting fed up of penny pinchers not making much money and talking badly of deal sheets I'm buying deals, I'm willing to wait on the deals for two to three months checking graphs etc and then I'm going to have my payday after I've done my due diligence of that strategy. So that's something that people generally don't look at when they're starting out. Another thing is that you could take some much smaller margins. The thought of earning 50p or less or slightly more off one item at this stage probably makes you think that's not worth it. Let me tell you, that could be worth it. That really, really could be worth it. Some of my items have made me 80p and 50p. But if you've got 100 of them selling a month, then hey, that's a good deal. When you're starting out, you assume that your deals have got to make you a set amount, 30% ROI, three pound profit, two pound 50 profit. That is another strategy in itself. Why don't you just focus on really fast selling products that are 50p 
or 60p or 70p or 30p profit and do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different SKUs throughout your month. There's another strategy there. This is what you don't find out until you've put that time, effort, maybe money, whatever, research into finding different things. Why don't you create your own bundles? Create create your own listing so that you won't have competition for a month or two months or five months or six months maybe um, and when they do come in it will take a long time you could run a whole business off just creating your own listings rather than jumping on saturated listings there's a multitude of different things that you don't learn unless you've been in the game for a long time and this is what I want to stretch out in this video um, <clears throat> Why don't you focus on just one niche? Why don't you focus on just baby stuff, for example, and become an expert on that? Why don't you go and try and open a load of trade accounts once you've got a good selling item, put it on your replenishables list, which is what I knew sooner, by the way. Create a replenishables list of stuff that's selling well for you. Try and contact trade accounts, open trade accounts with that company. Um, and then you could go and open wholesale accounts with different companies. There's a multitude of these tiny little things, and I can't think of all of them off the top of my head, but this is the sort of thing that you don't learn until you've been in the game for a long time. So I hope that video has helped a lot of people, okay? Um, the, the potential is big, okay? The potential is big. Oh, this is what I do in my videos, by the way. I just remember other things and carry on because you know, I like to be original. Uh, there's other things that you can do as well. You could just focus on listings. You could focus on listings that are selling very slowly with not much competition. I go into this in some of my other videos, by the way. You could focus on listings that haven't got much competition, um, maybe one seller, two sellers, and they're only selling two or three a month. Most people just assume it's not a deal. But if you jump on that, and then if you put paper clicks on that item, penny paper clicks, right, just 5p a click, then not only have you got chance of more than two sales a month, which is unlikely it's actually two sales a month, if Keeper says it is. Say there's five and you're sharing it with just one other seller and you've got paper clicks, you could then end up getting seven or eight sales from that listing a month divided by both of you and you're both selling four a month. That's fine. Maybe you're selling five.